everybody. everybody. Welcome and to our kitchen. Welcome to our kitchen. I'm the penguin. And I'm the chef. And today we're going to make a traditional Irish dish. I got this out of my mom's cookbook. And of course you know us. We like spicing everything up a little bit. This is Irish roast pork, potatoes, and cabbage. A lot of the seasonings that we're used to using, they didn't use or didn't have in the day back in Ireland. Of course today, it's like any other place in the world, you can probably get about everything. But uh, three of the seasonings they used quite heavily over there were uh, rosemary, if you can see that, thyme, and sage, and caraway seeds. Well, we don't have any caraway seeds, so we've used it before. I've made this recipe, I don't know, what, about eight or nine times uh -huh, now? Uh-huh, uh -huh. And the first time I made it, the way it was just... Every St. Patty's Day. Yeah, every, the way it was in the book, my mom's book. <clears throat> and it was good, but <clears throat> we like adding a little bit of extra stuff to it. So, let's get started. I'll go through the ingredients. Now, traditionally, it calls for pork loin that you cut and cook. But we haven't had pork loin a few times, so I've experimented using other pork meats. Today, what we have on hand is I got two large bone-in pork chops, and we had half a slab of ribs that I've already pre-seasoned with barbecue sauce before I put them in the freezer, so that's why they're a little bit redder. But that's okay, because one of the, the tweaks we do is we add a little barbecue sauce to our meat. We've got green cabbage, which we're going to use a quarter of a head of. we got purple cabbage, which we're going to use half a head of. i got a whole green bell pepper, which you can use any kind of pepper you want. It doesn't have to be a green pepper. It can be a red pepper, yellow pepper, whatever you like. I've got one large onion. Again, your choice. We have a sweet onion. And since we're doing the low-carb kind of thing, I'm using two large sweet potatoes. The recipe actually calls for three large rooster roosters. And for people who don't know that, that's a large red potato. Not a sweet potato. A large red potato that's grown only in Ireland as far as I know. That's one of their main potatoes over there. But again, you can use any kind of potato you like. I'm just using the sweet potato because it's a lot less carbs. Besides the thyme, the rosemary, and the sage, I have black pepper. I have a little bit of olive oil. I got some balsamic vinegar. I got apple cider vinegar. You can use any kind of cider vinegar you want. If you don't like balsamic, you don't have to add it to this dish, but we like it in ours. I've got a little bit of uh, Kansas City barbecue rub, it's just a, a dry barbecue seasoning. You can use any kind of dry seasoning you want, or if you don't have dry seasoning, since we're just applying it to the meat, you can use about a quarter of a cup of any liquid that you like, your choice. We have salt, we have garlic powder and onion powder, you know, and I have a little bit of butter flavored spray. You can use oil, you can use regular spray. That's just to coat the vegetables before we put them in the pan. And, of course, about a half a stick of butter. I have a large bowl here that I'm going to cut all the vegetables up in first and get them coated and seasoned, put in the pan. And I have a large baking pan over already sitting on the preheated oven that's foil lined. And I'm going to spray the inside of it with that spray. That's what the spray is for. And I've got my oven turned to 375 degrees. Well, let's get to cutting things up and we'll be right back. Okay, I've had, I got a, about a half of a, the purple cabbage and I got a quarter of a green cabbage, so I'm thinly going to slice this now. Has everybody had a good start to their week? It ain't in here. Yeah, it's been, the weather's not been really great the last few days, so. Not at all. Since Tubby Tracker Tuesday is tomorrow, which we're excited about, we don't know what the scale's going to show, but we're going to take it like a trooper no matter what. We're not going to let it get to us this time, are we? No, I've been, I've been trying harder. I've been drinking more water and stuff, so. We're both feeling a lot better, and that's the most important thing. But we have not been able to get outside and exercise, so we're not going to have a Tubby Tracker Tuesday exercise clip for you guys tomorrow. As of right now, unless something would drastically change, um, we're not going to have one. Yeah, 38 degrees and light rain and wind is not good to work on. I mean, we've done some um, kettlebell exercising in the house. Yeah, we got a 15-pound kettlebell and we got two six-pound or I think they're six-pound dumbbells. Yeah, and we have some ankle weights, but we're not going to show that. We like to show it when we go outside to the outside gym. But there won't be any clip of exercising as of right now on Tubby Tracker Tuesday tomorrow. But 
we will have our chit chat and um, weigh ourselves and let you guys know, update you guys on how we're doing. I think we're, I think we're on track. Good. Yeah, I think we're good. I feel, I feel like I've lost some weight. Yeah, I feel like I have too. Chef said that I look like I have, so. Yeah, you do. We're excited about stepping on the scale. And I wish I'd quit saying that word. What word? So. So? Why do I do that? I don't know. Everybody's pretty It's annoying. Things. Yeah, it's annoying. Did your mom or your dad ever do that? Oh, no. No? So? <laughs> Not that I recall. I don't ever remember hearing them say that all the time. It's like, what word do you use to transition? Um, yeah, don't do I um. guess I use so in place of um. Yeah, don't do um. Uh, story, I got a story that goes with that. I got a little bad spot. Uh, at the place where I worked was actually the second place that belonged to the same company. Uh to say that plant managers were a dime a dozen. I'm sure a lot of you guys go through that. About every year or two, they'd get rid of somebody and hire somebody else. Well, they they hired one guy, and he was there about a month, and then he finally decided to have a plant meeting with everybody. And I think he was more nervous than any of us were because he said, um, about every sentence. And, um, this, um, that's, um, and... Through the microphone that he was using, it didn't really sound like um, it's like uh. So everybody started calling him Homer Simpson. <laughs> do, 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 do. I, I had to take public speaking when I was in nursing school, and I don't ever recall. I, I got an A in that class from presentations and stuff. I don't ever recall using the word so, so much. So, so much. Definitely didn't use the word, didn't, definitely didn't, um, so, I, see, I did it again. You did it again. If force a habit, I don't know why. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm not right. Maybe I might have got a better, bigger bowl out. No, I think you're all right. A lot of cabbage here. Well, if we need to get a bigger bowl, we'll get a bigger bowl. We've got plenty of bowls around. I know it's kind of an odd looking dish, but it, like I said, if, if you don't have purple cabbage and you just have green, that's fine. If you don't have green, you just got purple, that's fine. The purple's just for some added color. Yeah, purple tastes just a, a, a tad different to green, but not much. But we like the flavor of it mixed. That's why I specifically got the head of purple cabbage. Purple cabbage with balsamic vinegar is really good. Yeah, it is. If you've never had it, it's really good. Speaking of things, though, I wanted to say... I had seen a lot of our, our Canadian friends getting this dill pickle salad. Yeah. And everybody knows how much I love dill pickles. So I was just itching to get my hands on a bag of this dill pickle salad. So yesterday we had to run to town and the chef ran into one of our local stores. And lo and behold, he comes out with a bag of... Dill pickle salad. And did you say that place that makes that's not that far from here? The farm is like an hour from us, but the corporate is in California. Anyway, so I was all excited. It says shredded cauliflower, crinkle cut radish, red and green cabbage, green leaf lettuce, kale, dill pickle brioche crouton crumbles with creamy dill pickle ranch dressing. I guess from watching everybody eat it on camera, I was just, I had this illusion in my mind that somehow or another they had added some type of seasonings to the vegetables before they bagged it to give it a dill pickle flavor not to interrupt but mind you we didn't eat the, the croutons that came with it because we're on the diet and they would have carbs and no we didn't be, eat the croutons and they're supposed to be seasoned so we did not eat the croutons but just from my point of view and my taste i was highly disappointed to me, it definitely didn't have the dill pickle taste that I was looking for. The ranch dressing was good, and it did have the dill pickle flavor, but not as intense of a flavor as I was hoping for. So... But you gotta take it with a grain of salt, because she drinks pickle juice all the time. Yeah, I drink pickle juice a lot. So what I did, since we have some left over, is we had a, about, um, a third of a bottle of buttermilk ranch dressing. And we had some uh, fresh dill. So, 
We put some dill into the ranch dressing and I added a little bit of pickle juice to it, just a smidge. Shook it all up, let it sit for a little bit and it was so good, that dill pickle ranch dressing. I think it was better than the one that came in the bag. I like the dressing too. But like I said, if we'd have put the croutons in it, I don't know how intense the flavor of dill was in yeah, those. Yeah, I don't we, know. because we just, we just pitched them. I couldn't have them sitting in front of me because I'm a big cracker crouton kind of person in salads. If I'd sat there, I'd have been very tempted to grab them and put them on. And I yeah, didn't want the extra to so. be fair, we didn't eat the croutons. And the right. croutons are supposed to be pickle flavored. And I am right. i got to get a bigger bowl. So. Okay, but yeah, to be fair, we didn't eat the croutons and they were supposed to be pickle flavored. But I just, like I said, somewhere in my mind, I guess they had seasoned up the the vegetables somehow to give them also a pickle flavor. But I personally will not be buying it again. I prefer just to have the dressing that we made on our own romaine or iceberg lettuce or whatever kind of lettuce we have on hand at the time. Just letting you guys know if any of you are... She's not really supposed to eat cauliflower anyway. No. Because I have hypothyroidism, I'm not supposed to have any calciferous vegetables. And cauliflower is one of those vegetables that I shouldn't have. For anybody that's doing a lower carb diet, you know that cauliflower is one of your go-to vegetables. So I don't get that. But I do, I do eat green beans, which I love, love, love green beans. Sweet potatoes, because sweet potatoes, even though they're sweet, they're actually healthier for you, and they have a lot less carbs than a white potato does. Yeah. Which I'm okay with that. We just take it. We usually split one in half and share it and top it with our brown sugar swerve and some butter, and you can't tell the difference. Yeah, I, I take the sugar, I pick the brown sugar swerve, the butter, and a little bit of the uh, imitation honey that we got and put them all together and melt the butter and then I put it in the refrigerator and keep whipping it to make like a whipped butter like you would get at a steakhouse or whatever. Logan's ribeye or yeah. Texas Roadhouse or whatever. Really, really good. Really, really good. But since St. Patrick's Day is coming, we thought, well, it's about time to make this because we haven't had it for about a year. Yeah. And it's something that we can both have. We'll just use sweet potatoes instead of regular potatoes yeah. this time. So. On this diet. And I just don't like that word diet. Nobody likes that word. Yeah, because it reminds you of die. That was me. No, it's just diet is one of those dreaded words, I think. Well, like I said, it reminds me of die. Who wants to be on a diet? Die, diet. Uh, who wants to be on a diet? If we didn't go on a diet, we would die because our health was really suffering. Yeah. But, but I feel a lot better. You feel a lot better. We, and We've already been up for, what, about six hours now? Yeah. And, again, we, we had to run somewhere real fast first to get something. And we didn't take time to stop and, or eat anything beforehand, which is bad if you're on this diet. So I pulled through McDonald's. I know what you're saying. McDonald's bad. But we got a 10-piece chicken nugget. And they have about, what did we figure up, four have about nine. Yeah, there's nine carbohydrates and four nuggets. And I got a hot mustard, which is only like six for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So we split that give Poot a nugget because he wanted a nugget too but we yep. had four nuggets a piece so we've had a little something today stopped our tummies from growling so that's where we're at right now something it, to kick our metabolism uh, up this will probably be our only meal today and we'll not eat it all it'll, it'll last two or three meals and then later on tonight like she's been eating cottage cheese and a jello a sugar-free jello it has nothing i've been doing my uh kroger yogurts they have five carbs and i've been like taking a cherry yogurt mixing it with a cherry jello and chopping up putting a shot of uh, with topping on it, which is only like one or two carbs. We're like little piggies at night. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it makes a nice bowl full of stuff. She took a bite of mine last night. I put a black cherry with it. Uh -huh. And it was really good. And then she goes up and has her a few Doritos. And I go up and eat a big handful of mixed nuts. And that's pretty much how our day goes. But at least we're spreading it out a little bit more. We're getting three to four times. It well, yesterday, like I ate, yesterday I ate quite a bit. Oh, well, yeah. But. I, had a, I had a big hearty... Um, I had a big hearty sandwich. That's what I, I had too. We ordered the sauce on the side. Came home and had that on one of our keto buns. Cut in half, actually. Yeah, cut. Ahead, the, the buns are so thick. I told I told Chef, I'm like, the bun is just too much for me. I said, I wonder if we can cut one in half, you know, um, crosswise. And because 
to me that would be plenty enough bun and sure enough we could do that so we actually turned four buns into eight buns yeah which is a lot better deal for the three dollars and six cents and they hold up to a burger well so hers we, wasn't toasted and i put a little butter on mine and toasted mine in the air fryer like a real sandwich would be and it was really good anyway so we stopped and got a couple of the big hardies with the sauce on the side brought it home put it on our our keto buns with some sauce and then had some dill pickle salad on the side and i had some of my chips yeah, the chef had some chips, and then later on, I was still a little hungry, so I got into the cottage cheese, and I ate probably a third of the container of cottage cheese, and then we had, I don't know what we had later, but... You had the jellos. Yeah, I had two sugar-free jellos with a yes, pickles. ready whip. I had some pickles. I had the jello mixed with the yogurt. I had some more cottage cheese. I had the jello mixed with the yogurt. And, uh, the fruit. Yeah, and then later on I had a one of those meat sticks. Yeah, jerky sticks. Yeah. And then I probably had a, a third of a bag of my Doritos 3Ds. That's what I had yesterday. I felt good and full. I mean, our, our sleeping hours hurt us, but to a degree it also helps us because we're not eating as much. We're eating plenty. To keep our system moving and functioning the way it's supposed to but I think on St. Patrick's Day I'm gonna make up some kind of a dessert um, that's what I'm planning right now I've got a couple of got a couple of recipes in my book and I might try to make one of them I'm not sure yet so don't hold me to that depending on how I feel while I'm cooking this because the first step is to bake all this for an hour covered I was thinking we got part of a leek in there left, and I found a recipe for Irish leek soup. I might make just a little bit. I'm not going to go show you how and do all that stuff. It's sort of like a cream of leek soup, and a leek sort of like an onion or a green onion. So I think it'd be a good video for another time, but all this food, I don't know if I'm going to be hungry for soup on top of if, that, if but I, it's if, up to you. If I make a little and it turns out good, then we can do a regular video on it another time. Uh, didn't you want to talk about something somebody sent us? Somebody sent us. On the phone. Oh, well, I, I got an email. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. Um, that, that raisin cream custard pie that I had made. Um, I got an email today, and I was really happy. Um, it was from Darlene McFate, and she had sent me a picture, which I'll include right here. She had made the raisin cream custard pie, and in her email, she said that it was spot on to her grannies, and that they absolutely loved it, and she was very thankful, and we were thankful that we could help her. She, she was happy for us to be able to help connect her with some of her younger memories, so we were very happy about that. Again, we love it when people try our recipes and Let us know if they like them give us feedback on it. And she made one pretty pie. As you guys can see from the picture, she did a really good job on that pie. So we're really, really happy about that. Yes, very. I know for me and Chef, even though we haven't been able to um, eat the pie. We still have I, it. It's still we good. still have it. It's still good. It's been covered. Um, we haven't had our carb cycling day yet. No, Both of us are doing so well that we just don't. I guess it's a good sign when you don't feel the need to carb cycle or you don't want to have a cheat day or however people would look at it. We call it carb cycling. Some people call it cheating. To me, cheating is when you go overboard and eat absolutely everything that you know you're not supposed to have. For us, carb cycling is eating a few things that we may have been craving through the week that we can have like last week it was we both got a small french fry and we were content with that we didn't feel the need to have anything more than that yeah i think this time, but the next time let me start. get the pie i'll show you okay she went to get the pie to show you we still have it i separate my onions once they're sliced that way they break apart better in the bowl when you put the oil and the seasoning on them okay i just want to show you guys we had it wrapped up and in the refrigerator and we still have the whole pie the only little piece that's missing is the piece that the chef and I tried the day that we made the pie. Remember I told you that I tasted a little bit but spit my raisins out? And the chef had a little bite. 
two little but bites, actually. We still have the whole entire pie, so we've done really good. It's still good. As long as we keep it refrigerated, it'll stay good a while longer. Um, my one brother that lives far away, he loves custard pies and stuff. My brother that lives nearby, he's not big on raisins. So this is a reason why we didn't give the pie to them. So I think when we do decide to carb cycle, providing it's within the next few days, I think I'm going to indulge in a little sliver of this before we have to check it. I just hate to see it go because it's really good. Yeah, it's, like I said, I already but I just wanted to show everybody we've been good and we have not cheated. I already told her I want one, at least one for Christmas. Yeah, oh, we'll be making some for Christmas for sure. If, if my other family didn't live 40 miles away, I would have taken it to them. But I know a couple of them are also trying to cut back on what they're having right now. Because a lot of people have had a lot of COVID weight gain. Yeah. And um, Us too. my sister-in-law called me the other morning and wanted me to give her the name of the noodles. Because her and my brother were at Myers and they were going to pick up some of the carbonata noodles and some of the low carb bread so anyway i think we're gonna we're gonna cut for now let the chef get the rest of the vegetables cut up and when he's all done then we'll bring you guys back do you have anything you need to add before then no just a thinly slice put those in there i'm gonna thinly slice the bell pepper which you'll see the same way and i'm gonna mix it all up and you'll see all right guys we'll be back as soon as he gets all the vegetables cut up okay i got my onion and my bell pepper sliced up into thin slices like you see i've got my two sweet potatoes peeled and cubed now like i said in the real recipe you would use any kind of regular potato you want if you want to use sweet that's fine but it calls for three large potatoes this meal ends up making about enough for four people four servings four good servings and you gotta remember even though this is a big bowl full a lot of it's going to cook down uh, cabbage cooks down onion cooks down pepper cooks down uh one thing a lot of people don't know, I just wanted to throw out there, you, you know that actually potatoes are not indigenous to Ireland? They weren't brought over to Ireland until the 1600s uh, from England, I believe is what it said. I was reading up on it. Uh, basically at that time, milk was one of their number one things that they ate. Milk in all sorts of different ways, soured milk, and mm -hmm. different things I was reading on there was a mainstay of uh, Irish people back then. That and vegetables, and if you live, of course, close to the coast or, or a lake or whatever was uh, fish and they said coastal towns use seaweed for a lot of things just different soups and stuff you can make out of seaweed and wraps so the Japanese aren't the only people who use seaweed believe it or not yeah well, now back to our uh, and room. also we're only we only had a couple of pork chops so if you're feeding a family of four or six then you're gonna wanna most people aren't gonna do half ribs and half pork you certainly can but we'd recommend at least using two pounds of pork, whatever kind you choose, whether yeah. it be pork chops, pork loin, anything like that. Four slab. to six chops. Yeah, a whole slab of ribs. You see the pan I'm using, a whole slab would sit nicely yeah. on top. And that's or a whole you, slab of ribs, yeah. yeah. That's what you put on the very top is the meat anyway. Yeah. But my big plastic bowl we used to have, we don't have anymore. So I'm going to have to pour all my vegetables in here and then toss it with everything before I put my potatoes on. So that's what I'm going to do next. Plastic bowls don't last forever. Yeah, I know. We need to pick us up another Pioneer one. Pioneer woman does. <laughs> Unless you break them. <laughs> Unless you break them, yeah. I'm, I'm bad about that. My bad hand that's got the rods and screws in it, I have seizures in my hand every now and then, and I'll be holding something. You have spasms. Yeah, spasms, seizures, whatever you want to call it. I felt so bad, too. I did it right in front of my dad. My dad and mom were big yard sale people. They did antiques and stuff a lot. And... He had found me this big glass beer stein that had our last name on it. It was etched into it. And it was probably a really expensive uh, stein at one time. He didn't give a lot for it because he got it at a yard sale. And he gave it to me. And I picked it up and I was holding it and told him how nice it was and how much I enjoyed it. I was going to use it at home. And I had one of those and I turned around and it fell right out of my hand. Cause my hand but you can't went. help it. Yeah, I know. My hands are clean, guys. I washed them when I was You've off. You've never once. broke one of the Pioneer Woman yeah. bowls. The worst thing was fishing with him one day, and I threw my brand new rod and reel. He just came me out in the middle of the lake, and we lost it. And it was an expensive one. Yeah, it was a, a, a $50 reel and a $100 rod. So mm -hmm. got a piece of cabbage I didn't cut good there. But you see how pretty that is. You get this all mixed together. And like I said, it's going to cook down a lot. 
wonderful flavor too. Yeah, wonderful flavor. So the next step is to put on a couple of spoonfuls of olive oil or canola oil or any kind of oil you like. So I'm just gonna freehand it here. Yeah, drizzle it over. A couple, three spoonfuls of that. And now we're gonna go and add some of our dry seasonings to it. Now all the measurements of course will be at the end of the video, but here we go with our rosemary. Just a little bit of rosemary right now. Rosemary can be kind of overpowering. Now this isn't a real strong one. And then a little bit of thyme. All you need is a little thyme. <laughs> a little thyme? Mm -hmm. I want a lot more thyme. And a little sage. This one doesn't have a shaker end on it, so I gotta be careful with it. Yeah, sage can be overpowering, so yeah. you don't want to use too much. A little sage. And then the original recipe out of my mom's book calls for black pepper, of course. We're gonna go back and we're gonna add more of this seasoning at another point in the cooking process. And then a little bit of salt. I'm using regular salt this, the pink salt this time instead of my accent because you need to have real salt to get the vegetables to cook down. Not to mention it brings out the sweetness in the cabbage. Yeah. When you use a little salt. And of course my two that you know I always use, garlic powder. Going over it lightly once with garlic powder. Thank you. You're welcome. And onion powder. I'm a sous chef. There you go. I'm a sous chef. Now, like I said, I cleaned my hands beforehand, so now we're just going to toss all that together. And I've already pre-coated this pan with uh, cooking spray. Like I said, I use butter flavored spray. Later on, I'll be putting some butter into the mix and pads on top, so that's why I use the butter flavor. But if you don't have butter flavored, any kind of work. You don't even have to use butter. You can use margarine if you like. Or you can rub your pan down with butter. Butter, right. Yeah, you can do it that way too. Mm -hmm. Just trying to get everything coated a little bit. I'll be so glad when we lose enough weight where we can get out and do a lot more different stuff. We're getting there. Yeah. I'm going to go off camera for a minute and wash my hands so I can put the potatoes on for the next step and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got it all mixed up and I pulled a few more of the peppers to the top just so you can see them a little better. Next step is we're going to add our vinegar to this part of the recipe. It calls for half a cup of cider vinegar, your choice. So I'm going to put just a little less than half a cup of vinegar. And then I'm going to put just a couple tablespoons and I'm just going to eyeball it of balsamic. The balsamic is really strong. I'm using my measuring cup to kind of measure it here. Balsamic is a thicker vinegar. Yeah, a lot stronger. But That's it's got great flavor. About two tablespoons there, I'd say. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take that, and we're going to pour that over our vegetable mixture. This is kind of like a, a little bit of a play on sweet and sour cabbage. Yeah, a little bit. To a degree. Yeah, I know one of the ways you can make this, like, probably people over actually in Ireland do. If they don't have roast pork, they use a lot of uh, bacon over there. Not like we think sliced bacon, but like whole pieces of bacon, mm -hmm. boiled bacon's another thing over there. They would use bacon in this. Okay, you see what I got so far here? Now we're gonna take, we're gonna spread those sweet potatoes out on top of this. We're gonna put some more seasoning on top of that. That way the potatoes get seasoned. And then we're gonna lay the meat on top of that. We'll show you when we get back. Okay, now I know a lot of you are saying, well, Chef, why didn't you just mix the potatoes up with the, the cabbage, the onions, and the peppers? Well, I poured that vinegar on it, and that vinegar is all on the bottom now. It's going to steam and put some taste into the potatoes, too, but I didn't want them laying in it. That way, they wouldn't have a real strong vinegary taste. That way, you have that, like she was talking about, the peppers, onions, and cabbage is going to have a little bit of the sour sour vinegar taste where the sweet potatoes since we're using sweet potatoes or I've, even regular potatoes this is the way i do it they have more of their own flavor there's still steam in it but they won't completely cook in it next step now we're going to put the meat on there you go oh uh, i skipped a step i sorry got to season again that way the potatoes have seasoning so we're going to go back with our garlic powder and our onion powder and the rest of the seasonings. And it's a lot, e I would rather make a dish like this as opposed to having to do something over the stove and tend to it 
yeah, this, over and over again. You put this in the oven and you know it's cooking itself. Yeah, it only takes about between I don't know what an hour and twenty minutes, an hour and forty minutes. All together, yeah. yeah all together, and you got about. If I wasn't talking and doing it, I could probably have the prep done in about twenty minutes or less. So. Yeah. So. Just a little bit of sage. But you know us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we like talking. We're Gabby. Especially me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I do my fair share of talking too. So, 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 so. Oh. Uh, of that. Pepper. How to have pepper. How do you say pepper with an Irish accent? I don't know. <laughs> but I should be good. I think I got pepper. There you go. Pepper. Pepper. Yeah, I was looking up when I was studying on England, or I'm sorry, on Ireland before I did this. It had 10 top things not to do if you're in Ireland. And I couldn't believe one of them was Mention You Too, the band. They, for some reason, people over there don't like him as much. Like you don't want to mention much. the band U2. U2. You don't want to... Say top of the morning. You don't want to act like you have an Irish accent. And you don't want to say kiss me, I'm Irish. And you don't want to say I love you too. And there was something... I don't know, there was top ten things. I just yeah. thought some of them were kind of odd. Okay, now we've got that all seasoned up. Now we're going to put the meat on top. Now, like I said, I had these already in the freezer. And you can see they're kind of dark. I pre-seasoned them already for barbecue. So, I'm going to place them... Upside down, bone up first. I was craving ribs, y'all. Yeah, she was. And then I'm going to place my pork chops here right in the middle. Like so. And let's see if I can sneak another piece of rib down here. One this, hearty pan of food. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of, these are very meaty ribs. Very, very meaty ribs. But we'll have more than one meal off of it, oh, obviously. Yeah. yeah, we'll probably eat the pork chops tonight, and then we'll have the ribs the next time. I'm having a rib it. tonight. You're having a rib tonight? <laughs> I'm having a rib tonight. I'm getting me a little thing of barbecue sauce on the side, and I'm going to have me a little rib. Let me wash my hands real quick, and I'll finish seasoning it for you. Okay, now we're ready to season our meat. I have some uh, Kansas City barbecue rub is what we're using. You can use any... Barbecue rub you want. If you don't want rub on it at all, you don't got to. You just, you just want the pork chops plain. Or you can brush on some liquid barbecue yeah, sauce. Yeah, you can use about a quarter or half a cup of liquid barbecue sauce. I'm going to put some on now, and then I'm going to cover this pan with foil and put it in an oven at, on bake at 375 for an hour and just let everything cook. At that point, I'm going to take it out. I'm going to pull that foil off, and I'm going to do the first flip, and I'm going to flip all this meat over, and I'm going to season it again with this Kansas City a little bit of this Kansas City barbecue rub. And give it another 10 or 15 minutes on broil at 375 without the foil on it. And then we're going to check it for the doneness to see how the chops and the ribs and everything's doing, the potatoes. And if it needs to go longer, I'll flip that meat again and stick it back in the oven again for another 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, pork's got to be, I think it's between 145, 145. And, one, 145 and 165 mm -hmm. to be done. We have a little bit of different stove than we had when he made this last year. So he's just going by the temperatures of last year. Right. So it may need to be tweaked. And if it does, then we'll let you know. But there you go. Like I said, now I'm going to cover my whole pan with foil. If you have a pan that has a lid and you'd like to use that, that's fine too. Like a roasting pan. Like a roasting pan. That's, yeah, that would be great. We don't have one, so... Cover it, put it in the oven, forget about it for an hour, and let it cook at 375 degrees for an hour. And when we get to that point, I'll be back. The penguin caught me before I got any further, and it's a good thing, too, because I forgot. Not every time that I cook this, it's not in the original recipe, but I got a little over half a stick of butter there, between half and a three-quarter. I usually put some butter, lay some butter patties around and put some on the meat. That gives a little bit more oil to cook with, so... My motto is everything's better with butter. Like Paula Dean. Paula Dean loves butter. You can't get enough butter. I go around and put them in the corners like that or just wherever there's an open space. Yeah. And then I go back and I lay one on all the pieces of meat. So some of that butter will help them cook. Like yeah. so. Perfect. Now I'm going to cover it and get it in the oven at 375 for an hour. And then we'll be right back guys it's been an hour and 15 minutes i went ahead and let it go another 15 minutes because the first time i opened the foil it just didn't seem quite done up to me like i said this is a new oven to us 
and it just doesn't quite get as hot as our old oven. But at this point, we've checked the potato. They're pretty close to being done. Everything looks like it's good, so we're going to go ahead and flip our meat over. Get these ribs first. I tasted one of the potatoes and a little bit of the cabbage, and oh, how I've missed that. You don't realize how much you miss a dish until you haven't had it for a good while. Yeah, that's true. But wow, it's so good. Get the cabbage hanging on there. Get this rib flipped. Oh, I'm ready for it to be done. There you go. I got that all flipped. Now, like I said, this isn't from the original. I This is us tweaking stuff. Gonna add a little bit more of this barbecue seasoning. If I get some to come out, it's a little clumpy. Mm-hmm, yes, please. Like I said, you get some on your vegetables. It doesn't make that much of a difference. It's not that strong of a barbecue sauce. You know my favorite part? The cabbage. <laughs> the cabbage in the bottom. Yeah, cabbage is good. And the ribs. There we go. Got them all seasoned. Now we're going to put this back in the oven. I'm going to leave it at 375, but I'm going to turn it from bake to broil. That's the sound you just heard was broil. Oh, I'm sorry. I hit the wrong one. I hit one. There we go. Broil. And reset my temperature up to 375 and I'm gonna set the timer for about eh, 10 to 15 minutes I'll probably do 15 in this oven and come back and look and see what the meat looks like see if it's starting to brown on top is what I want to happen and get a nice brown coating if not I'll leave it longer if I don't think the meat's quite done if, if your meat's a little thicker you want to flip it back over the other way again on broil that'll work too but we'll be right back there you go there's our Irish ropes pork, cabbage, and potatoes. You see what it looks like. I, I let it go about 20 minutes is what I let mine go to get that a little brown on top of like I said. Let's get this plated up and show you what it looks like. There you have it. We got it all plated up. And as you can see on the side, I went ahead and made that leek soup with a dollop of sour cream in it. Uh, I didn't have as much leek as what I had, thought I had, so I had to add a couple of green onions to it, but it's it's pretty much the same. It's a good soup. I like it. It's a it's, uh, It'd be really good like a chicken broth on a cold day but it's traditional to go with this you have uh if you were if you were in ireland and eating this you'd have soup soda bread and then some type of dessert if you were at a restaurant set down if you can see all the colors in that yeah the purple the green the white the orange so good yeah we've already took a little taste test to see what it tastes like this time it's delicious i think it tasted better than last year in my yeah. opinion but that's because we use sweet potatoes this time as opposed to regular potatoes yeah, instead of regular potatoes yeah and this is really really good this has leeks a little bit of green onion and some shallots some um, vegetable stock some chicken bouillon better than bouillon some heavy cream yeah i, I did my own take on it from the recipe so and I a little it sour cream first time i've ever made that and it, it turned out really good and i i think i'll probably do a video on it later on just to show you guys how to make that later on in a year when it starts getting a little colder outside it's perfect for saint patty's day oh, it's yeah. green yeah, it's got a good green color to it okay well, that plate right there has already been claimed. The penguin said that one's hers because she wanted ribs and, a, and maybe a pork chop. She might not eat the pork chop, but she'll probably eat all the stuff underneath of it. And there's very little carbs in this. Oh, yeah. Like I said, the sweet potato is really the only thing you really got to count. Cabbage, peppers, onions, I don't count when I count carbs. Meat, I don't count. There's none in the dry rub I was using. So basically, it's just a sweet potato. And I probably won't eat all the sweet potato, but I've been craving cabbage and I've been craving ribs, so I'm ready to dive in. And you can really smell the that balsamic mixed with the apple cider vinegar cooked into all that stuff. It's really good. So good. This would make a great St. Patrick's Day meal. Yeah, I agree. So I guess we'll see you guys tomorrow on Tubby Tracker Tuesday. Yep, Tubby Tracker Tuesday tomorrow. Cross my fingers and pray I've lost some weight since last week. But if it hasn't shown what you want, you're not going to be disappointed, no, right? No. Any pound lost is a pound not gained. Yeah, That's... I agree. All I right, agree. guys. Well, we will see you tomorrow in the next video. Be ready for Tubby Tracker Tuesday. See you later, guys. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.